2D Echo Basics One of the key principles to keep in mind while doing a 2D echo is that 3D structures would appear as cross-sections in a two-dimensional plane. While fluid and solid organs conduct sound, bone and air do not, resulting in anechoic shadowing or dark areas. And as bone is uniformly dense, uniformly anechoic areas are seen. Unlike with air, which has the classic shimmering effect because of a mixture of anechoic and hyperechoic areas. Common propositions while doing a 2D echo include fanning from left to right, angling, rotation around a perpendicular axis, sliding, and stabbing. Some of the common positions viewed on doing a 2D echo include 1. Parasternal long view, used to estimate systolic function and to identify a pleural or pericardial effusion. This probe is placed on the third or the fourth intercostal space with the pointer directed towards the left elbow. Estimating systolic function is done by first identifying the mitral valve with the anterior leaflet and the interventricular septum. In normal systolic function, the anterior leaflet is seen to slap against the septal wall, as shown in the imaging. Depressed systolic function would result in the slowing of the slapping action, while a hyperdynamic systolic function would result in a rapidity of the slapping action, often leading to a decreased left ventricular volume. A pleural or pericardial effusion is identified by an anechoic area in the region of the posterior pericardium and the descending aorta. Absence of a separation between the posterior pericardium and the descending aorta indicates a pleural effusion, while the presence of a separation between the two indicates a pericardial effusion. 2. Parasternal shot view is used to estimate right ventricular strain. The probe is positioned by rotating it clockwise 90 degrees to the long axis at three different levels. At the aorta valve, known as the Mercedes Benz sign. At the mitral valve, known as the fish mouth sign. And at the apex with the papillary muscles. The right ventricular strain, in which the right ventricular pressure is greater than the left ventricular pressure, is denoted by a D-shaped septum, caused by the bowing of the interventricular septum into the left ventricle. This is typically seen with the case of a large pulmonary reembolism. 3. Apical view is used to visualize all four chambers of the heart, including the left ventricular outflow tract and to estimate the hemodynamics with a color Doppler. The probe is placed below the left nipple and pointed towards the direction of the right shoulder. Initially, all four chambers of the heart will be visible, but by decreasing the fanning angle, even the left ventricular outflow tract becomes visible. The apical view is the best position to estimate hemodynamics, as in this position, the ultrasound beam is parallel to the direction of blood flow, thereby allowing the Doppler shift to be visualized clearly. With the color Doppler, red color indicates that the direction of blood flow is towards the probe, while a blue color indicates that the direction of blood flow is away from the probe. 4. Subcostal or subzevoid view is used to visualize a pleural effusion. The heart is visualized via the liver by placing the probe 3 to 4 centimeters left lateral to the xiphoid process and pointed to the left neck. A pericardial effusion can be visualized this way by using the liver as an acoustic window.